Hey everyone, welcome to week 52. This is day four. This is Thursday. This is our ongoing bold and sensitive week. Remember, those are two aspects that we're trying to search for and to emphasize um, in our painting. And we're having as a constant the four color Zorn palette. So we'll see how we do today. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is day four. This is our fourth day of our relationship status, bold and sensitive. Please swipe right. Actually, I don't even know if it's swipe right or swipe left. <laughs> I've never used a dating app in my life. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. I just, you know, it is what it is. So I have no idea if you swipe right, if you like somebody or if you swipe left. So swipe in, you know, whichever direction you feel that bold and sensitive uh, leans towards. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, that's the theme for this week. It's probably, you know, top three worst names for the uh, weeks we have done. But, you know, I'm standing by it. I think it's pretty relevant. So <laughs> uh, I think yesterday was a very good example of how... I feel that that is exactly the way I wanted to describe this week. Remember, we have as a ground wire of sorts, we have our uh, Zorn palette. So it's very, very important for us to keep that as a constant uh, throughout the week. I think that yesterday was a proof of how I would love to attack paintings. I'm getting more and more excited about, and I'm going to be super honest here, I want to be able to continue not exactly this project, not our painted lives as we know it, a daily painting, doing weekly themes and trying to do 47 weeks a year. I think that that's pretty tough to maintain. As a project, that's going to be a two-year project. But I want to see if we can keep going in the sense that I want to be able to do larger um, I was going to say more committed works, but it's not about commitment. It's more of an ever-present exploration, let's say. So I want to be able to execute larger images where I want to share with you guys like all my thought process and you know how I block it in and how I construct it and maybe how I scrape things off and how I'm trying to figure out how to navigate certain images. And they would be far more complex in terms of execution, that's for sure. I don't think they're more complex paintings. I think I've done plenty of exercises, you know, during this past year that were very, very challenging. I mean, extremely challenging paintings where I would push myself to try and solve them in a couple of hours. So I think it would be a different exercise. I don't think it means that these daily paintings are easier. It would just require like a different sort of uh, tool set, a different mindset. But I want to do that. And I'm saying this because I think yesterday's painting, this gesture, this beautiful gesture of Fer, where she was just kind of turning her shoulders towards us, um, I think it's such a beautiful gesture because you can almost tell how the rest of the mechanics of the body are working, even though they're not superficially evident. You can't tell what her torso is doing. But because, and hopefully I did this well enough, because of the way these subtle folds are constructed, you can actually intuitively know what's happening, you know, underneath with that structure. So that's super, super important. And even though we don't see her hands, we can interpret that pose as being anchored by those hands, you know, right above the hip. So there's a lot of things that are not said but that I think that we can complete with the information that we have. And I really loved it. And I think that that's one of the ways, I think you guys have heard me say that one of the ways that I want to approach painting in the future is by having like a very energetic, almost like study, you know, gesture-based sketch underneath the painting. I want to paint oversized sketches. Uh, you know, even thinking about that, it's giving me a migraine right now because I'm thinking that I would have to use, you know, big brushes and loads and loads of paint, which is a little tough, but I can work around it. Like I could buy cheaper paint and I could have like a really small palette and just go to town, you know, put paint down and be completely fearless. So I can kind of tell that that's the next step that I want to take with my painting. Um, it's, I don't know if it's a new step. I think it's, you know, old things that I've done before, but maybe seen under a different light. And I think I'm going to experience them in a different light. So I would love it if, if we could find a, a, some way to just keep this community going. Cause my favorite part about social media is not social media. Like the tool itself, I really don't care for Like I don't care for YouTube or I don't care for Instagram. 
And to be honest, that's what keeps us sane. We don't really look at numbers. We don't really look at metrics. We don't care about engagement percentages. And I love you guys, but all of that is trash. All of that is trash. We don't really care about any of that. And I think that that's why we're capable of concentrating on our project and doing like super cool videos that we're totally committed with. And we just don't pay attention to all the other rubbish that honestly wouldn't really give anything back to us. We're not really learning anything from those numbers. What we do like is the community that's behind, you know, this very small kind of tight knit community of people that have watched the videos and have said, hey, this is super helpful or you guys are awesome company and we just love to hang out with you guys and listen to you while you're painting and I'm painting too or while I'm cooking and you're painting. We've been able to create like such wonderful dynamics that I'm hopeful that that's what we can maintain. Again, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, those things don't really matter. Uh, in fact, they're kind of evil. But I do think that if we put that very superficial part away, what we're left with is just the sharing of experiences and just real human beings underneath these exchanges. And that's what we love. You know, we love that we can have a very kind of cool little family here that we can share stuff with and we can grow together. That I find super, super cool. Hopefully that's going to be year three, if we can make that happen. Who knows? I'm not anticipating myself. I'm just being super excited. And the reason I am excited is because yesterday's painting showed me that I can approach painting in a way that I've always wanted to approach it. I've always been super scared. I almost have to try to convince myself that this is something that I naturally possess you know, that this is something that I can do, that it's inside of me, that I'm capable of doing. But I sometimes don't believe it, which is kind of weird. I think it happens to all of us. Like, we know that we have it in ourselves to try and do something that is going to be something that is going to get us closer to the artist that we want to be. But for some reason, we just create excuses or we just find reasons to create obstacles in our way and just make everything hard for ourselves. So I know it's a simple painting yesterday, and I know if you look at what we're doing under that light, you could argue that, yeah, it's just this gestural study that you did yesterday, and that's about it. But honestly, for me, it's like a lot more because I don't know if people can see it. And I think perhaps only us can see those things when we are working. But I thought it was a wonderful painting experience. I really, really liked it. You know, the decisions that I took, I really liked how I edited the information that I saw and I wasn't trying to do more than I needed to do. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that part of the process. I'm just very excited to see how that manifests itself. If it does, you know, I'm not going to push anything. I'm not going to force anything. I, I really like when things are kind of organic, but I'm, I'm quite hopeful to see how this can have an effect on, on future painting, on the way I can approach uh, future paintings. If I am being a little bit anticipatory of year three, it's just because I want to put to test all these like new experiences that I've gathered and I want to see where it takes me. It's just excitement. I'm just being super genuine to myself and letting myself feel excited about what's to come. Now I can't get carried away because it's uh, February. We still have like 11 months to go and I want to be very present in the exercises that I do, you know, for each day. I think that this project makes sense if I am 100% there every single day. And every time I do a voiceover like this one, I am also genuinely trying to reflect upon what that painting experience taught me. So yeah, yesterday I was happy. I was very, very happy. There was a lot of stuff in there that I was like, yep, that's the painting that I wanted to paint. And I don't want to make it sound like it's surprising for us to paint the painting that we intended to paint. There's a lot of you painters out there and you know that this doesn't happen often. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to make it sound like it's a miracle, but it's tough. You know, it's very, very tough to paint the paintings that we really genuinely want to paint. And I think yesterday was important for me. So that was super cool. But here's the thing. Today, I didn't want to repeat the same thing that I did yesterday. Why? I don't know why. Because I don't want to force things. I don't want to identify things that I do well and then just squeeze the crap out of them and then try to understand them as manner, as style. 
Because it, the minute that I start doing that, then I kill it. What was beautiful about this experience is that it made sense for that painting. And I can't, you know, shove it into another painting just because I think it's cool. No, no, no. Things have to happen by themselves. They have to make sense by themselves. So for today's painting, I told myself, I'm going to try to be a little more sensitive. You know, yesterday, I think the balance leaned towards the expressive side, towards the bold side, the committed side, the mark making side. And it's not that those things are not going to be present in today's painting. In fact, I think that they always are going to be because I am that sort of brushy painter. But I think that for today, I told myself, slow down. I have a ton of trouble with those two words, slow down. I mean, we've talked about this before, but one of the problems that I have with gouache painting is the fact that I don't know how to understand the tempo of it. And I don't really slow down. I don't know when to slow down. I don't know when to stand back and say, okay, I got to let this area dry. I just have to be a little more patient. I'm just like this animal that hadn't eaten for days and suddenly found food and I'm like binging like crazy. I'm like, oh my God, no self-control. So when, <laughs> when I'm painting, I'm quite feral. I think I'm under control, but I think I'm quite emotional when I put stuff down. And it is very hard for me to understand when I have to slow down. Many times I just go overboard and then I have to really kind of track back. I always have to pull out like a smaller brush or a lining brush and try to find my drawing again because I'm completely lost. So it would be nice if I could have like a little bit more balance with, with my painting in the sense that I can just feel like I'm attacking the uh, surface but I'm also being respectful to more sensible qualities. And I think that today I was like, okay, just take your time. You know, you're going to solve your drawing and just be careful with your drawing. And I think, you know, my drawing at the beginning was essential. Yesterday's drawing was just like a scribble. I mean, I, I took it a bit further than a scribble, but very quickly, you know, two minutes into the painting, I had covered the whole thing up and it didn't really matter. But I think today I told myself, no, you're going to pay attention to those marks that you do with drawing. And you're going to respect them, but not let them condition you. Because if there's something that I've never liked about the relationship between like an underdrawing and a painting is the fact that a drawing can be super controlling. You know, it can actually establish so many parameters for a painting that when we're painting, we're just, again, clenching our butt cheeks so hard that it's almost impossible to paint. Like you can feel that there's this inability to just put a stroke down to, to think through painting because painting is being subjected so much to the parameters that drawing has already established. So I don't want to do that. I want to find like a really nice relationship between those two. And I think today was very good. You know, today I think I was in a place where I was like, my drawing is actually helping me. It's helping me a ton to make sense of future painting decisions and I'm being able to respect it, but I also felt I wasn't tethered to it. I knew that it would have been dumb to just paint over it and, and just forget about all the um, reflections that I had done through drawing. So I told myself, no, this is good. You know, this is a very good starting point. Try to remain faithful to it, but still find a way to make painting also have a presence. And I think today was about reaching that balance and I was very happy with it. By the way, I have to give Danny credit because in one of the breaks that we have, not really breaks, but we have to stop recording and then start recording again every like 27, 28, 29 minutes. Uh, when she came in, she loved that there were areas of the raw paper showing. And at the time I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to paint them. I'm probably going to paint over them at some point. And I totally paid attention to her because she has an awesome eye. She has a really, really good educated eye. Like she can spot things in paintings that sometimes I don't really see. And she'll find just these little magical places in paintings or sculptures or images that that it's wonderful. That's one of the things that I love about her is that she... She sees what I don't see, and that's incredible. Like, she completes my vision. So I totally paid attention to that suggestion. Oof, that cream color paper, it totally works. You know, it, it really gives a ton of air to the painting. I think it works as a color. It's not far from the color that I could have painted with um, yellow ochre and white. So, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm cheating. Like, I'm using a hue that wasn't available to me with my palette. 
no, it just felt right. It really felt that this was air that was meant to be there. Um, and it feels natural to the palate. So I was very happy that um, my ego didn't interfere because that sometimes happens. I mean, sometimes we can get the perfect comment and we're just not ready to hear it or we just don't want to hear it. We, we feel like, no, I know what I'm doing or I'm going to figure this out by myself. And I'm one of those stubborn painters. Like I usually never ask for anyone's help. Um, I always think that I can do this by myself. And it proves that many, many times people can hold the answers for us and we just have to be willing to listen. So I really like today's painting. I mean, you know, I, I sometimes speak about inhaling and exhaling, and I know I'm sounding like a yoga class here, but I think yesterday's painting was just about letting everything out. It was about this expulsion of gesture and then trying to, I often say, trying to tame, you know, all of that gesture. And I think yesterday it worked out. And today it was about, you know, inhaling and just taking in all that experience that happened yesterday and realizing, okay, this is something that's super powerful, but it doesn't mean that I have to use it every single time. It has to make sense. And it didn't quite make sense for today's exercise. Today was about a little bit more control, a little more sensitivity, a little more attention, a little more patience, just taking my time. And this is something that's really hard for me. It is. I'm not naturally built to be this sort of person. So whenever a painting is asking me to slow down, I always feel like attacked. I'm always ready to defend myself. It's nice that I can give myself these little micro moments where I can admit defeat in a way and just put my arms down and say, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to give this a shot. I really like that today's painting is the one that followed yesterday's painting. Now that's going to be it for today. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. I think I want to, I'm going to paint my sister and I'm going to try to be bolder, I think. And I'm going to do something that I always want to do with this palette. And I'm going to describe it super quickly. In this palette, even though there's a black, there's an ivory black, ivory black doesn't quite behave like an earth tone. So in my mind, there's always like the separation from what yellow ochre is and raw sienna and raw umber and burnt umber, burnt sienna, transparent red oxide, all these earth tones. Black feels different to them. So... In this four color palette, there's only one earth tone and it's a fairly light earth tone. Um, and it's very hard to try to make the whole palette feel very earthy. It is very, very hard to control that tiny little space where you can actually start evoking earth tones through, you know, this palette. I'm going to try that tomorrow. I want tomorrow's painting to feel very earth tone heavy. So it's going to be a study in like these yellow, orangey browns. And I think it's going to be pretty cool. But that's tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Remember, this is what's important about all of these social platforms. It's just us feeling like we can connect. Not the other stuff. The other stuff doesn't matter. Don't let it have any control over your life. If you're an artist and you put your stuff up on Instagram and you get two likes because your mother has two accounts... I'm looking at you, mom. Thank you. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. Don't give the power to social media to validate anything that you care about. And I think we have to be super aware of that because that is a huge risk currently for people that have creative endeavors like many of us. We can actually fall into this terrible dark place and granting the power to all these platforms is not really going to help us. So what I feel helps is thinking that there are real connections that can be made through these tools and that when you understand that there's this tangible human being on the other side and you can start, you know, connecting with that person, that's when things really start having value. So just try to concentrate and separate the good from the bad. I feel that that's super important. But anyways, we love you guys. Tomorrow is our final day in our bold and sensitive week. So <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.